Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Avenger 2 and the topic of today's video is Unisim. So every synthesizer will do Unisim a little bit differently and in Avenger, if we have a fresh preset here, we just have a saw wave and here on the left hand side we can start adding Unisim. And the center knob we can detune it. And the right hand side we can adjust the panning. Up here at the top, we can adjust our voices. So all the way down here at the bottom, we have seven. And then we can choose the octaves. All the way down, we have four. Which spreads the unison voices throughout the different octaves, which is really, really cool. Now, this is a very versatile tool here, but sometimes you want to get a little bit more fine tuning with this. So, for example, if we go to a fresh preset here, so we just have our saw wave. And instead of going into this over here for unison, we can actually go into the voicing. So here we have four additional voices that we can basically change to how we want to. So for example, we have one saw wave. Let's turn another one on here. So now we have two. Now the cool part about this is we can adjust the tuning, the panning, and the volume of each individual voice. So for example, if we have this tuning here, let's hold down shift and let's maybe go maybe around like four cents to the left, and then let's turn the next one on and then hold shift and go four cents maybe to the right, something like kind of like that. And then for the panning, we can keep these up in the middle if we want to, or we can start moving these around. So maybe for these first two, we can hold down shift and then bring these, actually not hold shift, let's go maybe 50% to the left and then 50% to the right for this next voice. Pretty cool. So now let's take this a little step further. So let's use these other two voices here. So the third one, instead of going four, maybe we can bring this here to maybe 20 on the left. And then this one here, maybe 20 on the right as well. And again, you can hold down shift to kind of really get those fine increment tunings. And then for these last ones, let's go hard left and hard right for this one. So definitely pretty cool. So right now these are gonna be at a default of 100% volume. So we can bring these all down and kind of mix them in how we want to. So maybe for the first one here, maybe we can maybe 70%. Same for this guy. And then maybe these other two, let's see how, how these are gonna sound. And sometimes a little bit louder kind of sounds cool too. So 122% for this guy. And let's try to match that as well. So maybe around here. Let's go to this guy here because it did sound a little bit left heavy. And here we're in a pretty good spot. I mean, that's just a mean unison right there. And we can get even crazier with our tuning. So these are 22. Let's go with something a little bit crazier. Maybe 40. And then finally, we have a sub oscillator down here. So maybe we can choose a square for this one and really fatten this up here. So yeah, it's a really way to get a fat unison sound. Now, what's interesting as well, something I kind of like doing in patches. So if we do have a sub oscillator like this and we have this volume control, I kind of like bringing this down and then maybe using a macro and drag and drop it on this guy. And then, for example, let's bring this all the way up and kind of see how the, uh, the low end fits with this patch. Maybe go a little bit more so you have kind of a lot of wiggle room. Something like that. So now this macro here, we can label this as sub.
Okay, so we have something kind of cool like this. And furthermore, so let's say we have something like this. We like these settings here and we don't wanna to have to do this every single time. What's really cool, we can click up in here and we can save this as its own preset. And then every time we load up an oscillator, we can just apply that preset and we have our default units in that we spend a little bit of time on tweaking so we can easily recall that at a later time. <laughs> And there's also some other ones as well. So in this list here, there's a lot of different stuff you can pick from, but over here on the right, we have some unison times two, unison times three, and unison times five. And it's kind of advantageous to kind of take a look at these. So if you look at the second one, we have another voice of unison, and this is 21 or 21 cents detuned, and then panning's a little bit to the left, and the volume's at 85. <laughs> Then we go to the next one, unison three. So we're going to add another voice here. And then we have 21 detuned on the left-hand side and then 20 on the right. And then it's kind of panning 33 and 33. And the volume's around 65 or so percent, maybe 68, something like that. And then we can go to unison five, which is going to enable all of these here. Now the cool part is this is on one oscillator. So for example, we can add another one here. So oscillator two, and we can do the same thing, go to unison five, then we have this here, and then maybe bring this up an octave. <laughs> We really have some fat unison and then we can do the same thing as well we can add the sub on this guy but it might be a little bit redundant in that case so we have some nasty stuff like this here so we have a huge thing of unison what else can we do with this guy a little bit of release here Let's bring in an EQ and kind of just sculpt the sound a little bit here. And it's nice to add a little bit of noise as well to get some more content in there. Okay, so we have this guy, maybe we can add a little bit of compression. And then our good old trusty multiband distortion. Because to really make it sound huge like this, a lot of the high frequencies are really gonna get that sizzle, that electric kind of feeling. That's just huge. And then also add some delays to this guy. And then a little bit of, you know, some dimension is actually kind of nice here for this. And then let's see what happens with some reverb. I really do like the AA reverb. So there we go. We have a huge fat unison here. Now with a patch like this, it's so huge. So if you did play some chords, it might not sound so good. So something that we can do is we can go to the pitch category and we can, we can go for a legato, either mono or poly. So it cleans it up a little bit and we get some of that slide. And from here, it's kind of like you can just do whatever you want with it. We could even bring down our sustain and send these both to our ARP, something kind of like this here. And 
then change these back over to poly legato. And increase some of our voice. Let's go max 64. Yeah, get some crazy huge arps with this. Guy. But yeah, so there's a lot of things you can do with this type of sound. The gigantic sound. So yeah, basically the moral of the story is you don't always have to use this V-Saw unison. You can jump into the voicing and really get creative with your um, with your voicing and your unison and just dial it in exactly how you want to. And keep in mind, we just here edited the uh, the tuning, the panning, and the volume. Here we can adjust the pitch as well. So if you want to do stuff maybe like power chords, you can bring up uh, a fifth here. So bring one of these up maybe by seven, something kind of like this here. <laughs> Let's see, we'll bring this up. Actually, this is already up the transpose. Let's bring this back to zero. Let's maybe use this guy and then maybe bring these up by 12. So an octave here. Jeez, that's a crazy, <laughs> a crazy super saw there. So yeah, definitely mess around with the quarter here. You can make some really cool stuff and you can also make cores, obviously, right? The quarter, but yeah, if you come up with some really cool unison stuff here, definitely save it as a preset because it comes in handy later. There's one I made here. Where is it? Down over here. Yeah, the John Audio Super Saw, which is really useful because, you know, it's nice to spend a little bit of time and really making that Super Saw exactly how you want it. So then it's easy to recall later and keep in mind. So we have an oscillator and then we have four of these, uh, additional voices plus the sub oscillator and that's just in one oscillator and we can have up to eight oscillators so it's pretty crazy so yeah hopefully uh that inspires you to make some of your own custom unison and thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next one